The cleaners of the dungeons, the very actual reason why dungeons are not filled with cockroaches, insects, or moss. Gelatinous cubes clean up the floors, walls, and ceilings of flesh and cellulose, leaving behind the spoils that might actually matter to the dungeon's lord, the armor, the weapons, and the magical items. In the Monster Manual for 5th edition, we literally got only two small paragraphs detailing what these classical monsters are all about, and that is unacceptable, and that's why I'm here to fix this very problem. But first, let's actually go on and see what the Monster Manual actually says. It says gelatinous cubes scour dungeon passages in silent, predictable patterns, leaving perfectly clean paths in their wake. They consume living tissue while leaving behind bones and other materials undissolved. A gelatinous cube is all but transparent, making it hard to spot until it attacks. A cube that is well fed can be easier to spot since its victims' bones, coins and other objects can be seen suspended inside of the creature. And that's it, that's that's it. <laughs> Not a lot of lore there. This here is the stat block. We can see that it is immune to a bunch of stuff. We can see that it has blind sight, but it doesn't tell us why it has blind sight. The gelatinous cube can engulf creatures by merely entering other creatures' spaces, and then it deals acid damage to them. On top of that, the cube can create soda pods that also deal acid damage on strike. This attack is actually wrong, believe it or not. Gelatinous cubes are not supposed to do acid damage on strike, and it is an extreme oversimplification of what they actually are supposed to do. At least according to 1st edition, 2nd edition, 3rd edition, 4th edition, and according to the creator of the Forgotten Realms, Ed Greenwood. So whoever wrote this one down either screwed it up or it was creating an entirely new creature. Let's talk about what the Monster Manual does not tell you about gelatinous cubes. First of all, the name Gelatinous Cube is the adventurer given name, the name that common people give it, but the real scientific term used by scholars is the Athcoid. The Athcoid has a layer of anesthesia that covers all around the outside of its body. This substance is a paralyzing agent that looks like a gummy secretion which is absorbed into the bloodstream of the prey through the skin. So what happens is, when the Athcoid slams an adventurer with its soda pod, the adventurer will get secreted with this substance, it'll get absorbed into his bloodstream and the adventurer will fall paralyzed for one to two minutes. This is when the cube will proceed to engulf the prey. Now, being completely paralyzed, the prey will not be able to swim away from the ooze now inside. At this point, the cube will start to produce its digestive fluids to digest the prey. This is the acid damage that the Athcoid deals. This acid will dissolve the flesh and cellulose and allow the cube to consume it, leaving only bones and metallic or glassy objects behind. This is how the creature feeds. You will only take acid damage while already inside of the cube, not when he hits you with its soda pod. The acid, its digestive fluid, is produced and held in movable elastic cavities or bubbles within the cube's body. When the prey is engulfed by the cube, one or more of these mobile bubbles are shifted into contact with the prey. Now, athcoids have no sentience per se, they don't have thoughts, they merely follow certain stimuli to the letter. When they receive a specific stimulus, they react accordingly, and the response is always the same to any specific stimuli. This is how monster tamers and experienced adventurers deal with gelatinous cubes. If you do certain things, the cube will always respond accordingly. For example, when a cube encounters a cold surface or object, they simply cease to advance. They will then probe forward to seek our way past it or around it. On the other hand, they are actually attracted to vibrations or warmth, things that they can actually sense fairly well. Depending on the cube, some of them can sense warmth or vibrations up to 120 feet around them. This is actually how they get blind sense, which the Monster Manual neglected to mention. 
And this is also the reason why Athcoys are immune to charm effects or any form of magical control. They merely follow whatever stimulus they are receiving at the time and are not actually thinking. Now, even though Athcoids always return back to their cube shapes, they are actually fairly mutable and fluid when passing over or around objects. In fact, even though an average gelatinous cube is 10 feet on any one side and weights over 15,000 pounds, they can still pass through an opening as small as one foot in size. Unbeknownst to most adventurers, cubes can also move underwater and with great ease too, though it is important to know that underwater, the anesthesia that coats the outside of the cube becomes weaker underwater as it dilutes. Now let's talk about reproduction! How do gelatinous cubes reproduce? First of all, athcoids are, technically speaking, an immortal organism. As long as it doesn't suffer death via adventure, natural disaster, or via starvation, it'll actually live literally forever. As it lives and eats, it'll naturally grow in size. After about six years of growing, it'll then simply divide itself into two exact shaped cubes, both of which will go their separate ways. The now smaller cubes will grow back to their normal standard size in about three months time. It has been noted though that every once in a while, an athcoid will instead simply butt away a small baby cube and leave it in a dark corner or on a heap of trash. This tiny cube will then take a long time to grow into a normal sized gelatinous cube, or as it happens, may just be reabsorbed by the parent on accident, which is also something that they can do. When two gelatinous cubes meet, they always merge to become one of greater size. This union, albeit stable, typically only lasts for two to eight days before they split again. When they are together, the cube is twice as big and twice as strong. You will never, however, see a stable union of three cubes. When such a thing occurs, they will simply divide as soon as they can. Athcoids are also highly resistant to the cold and cold damage and are immune to electricity. Alright guys, that's it. Just a quick video. I would like to personally thank my Patreon supporters Walker, Modley, Zach Powell, Rocato Fan, Barry Mascant, 5E Magic Shop, Daniel Umar, Dr. Cowbell, Rusty Rain, Morgan Johnson, Biotechnofrag, Daniel Luna, Doug Feeder, Brad Salazar, The Great Codini, Terry Culp, G Herc, Red Soul Knight, Baracus Law, Omega Skills, Karathas, The Bulwark, and Osol for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. If you would like to support me as well, then please head on over to patreon.com slash Mr. Rex to support. But yeah, one of the bigger reasons why I wanted to make this video so, uh, so quick, and I mean, it was really short, but I needed it to be so that I could upload it today before the next month started. Uh, because I wanted to give you guys a little warning uh, and, and just to let you guys know about what's going on uh, with us here during this COVID season, so to speak. Um, so we're safe, we're healthy, we're good, uh, we're self-isolating, so... Uh, so far, there's there's nobody in the family that, that has the virus, so, you know, we're, we're good, I guess, is really what I'm trying to say here. There's no reason to worry for us, we're doing fantastic. Um, uh, I do want to say, though, that for the month of April, uh, all of our patron earnings for that month, I will go in and uh, I'll, I have to find some charity but because uh, I still don't know which one I would do, but um, all the month that we're going to earn for Patreon for this month of April, uh, we're all going to just donate it. Um, we're not really sure w which system or, or to which charity would benefit from, from this sort of thing for, for this COVID uh, situation. I have to do that yet, but just letting you guys know that I want to help in whatever way uh, I can. And I feel really bad, of course, taking money from you guys when all of this is happening. So uh, you guys don't have to. You are feel free to cancel uh, Patreon for this month. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab everyone who donated to me for Patreon for last month. And I'm going to say your names at the end of my videos like I always do, even if you didn't donate to me this month. Um, so you don't have to do it. It's okay. Those are the, of you who decide to do it anyways. Awesome. I, of course, I'll take the money and then I'll donate it for charity. Um, but just want to take the time here to just let you guys know that I'm doing this um, real quick. Just trying to do something, whatever I can to, to help make this a little better. But yeah, I'll continue to do these videos. There's no reason why not to. Uh, 
in, in my self-isolation, I actually feel more empowered to just keep on making videos. There's quite frankly nothing else for me to do, so I, I will just keep doing them as I can. But yeah, man, there's nothing else for me to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.